I've recently started collecting older video games. Specifically, all the survival horror games that I was too afraid to play as a kid. Now that I'm older and have a steady job, it's nice to be able to court that younger version of me and buy all the stuff that my family couldn't afford. Plus, the games are just fun. Everything from Resident Evil to Rule of Rose, Fatal Frame to Parasite Eve. I love being scared, and these games work their hardest to do it and sometimes succeed. Before I play them, I like to go on YouTube and watch retrospectives, reviews, and old ads for them, so I can sort of get settled into the headspace and learn about the creation of them. But there's one that I've stumbled on that I'm unable to find anything about, almost like it came out of nowhere. I found this game at a used, like, game movie music store just off the red line in Chicago. It's called Soul Cemetery for the GameCube, a survival horror game about a detective returning to their hometown to investigate the mysterious death of her father. It's very obviously inspired by Resident Evil, featuring the tank controls, fixed camera angles, and similar graphics, not to mention the focus on zombies which wander the town. There is also some Silent Hill influence with the heavy use of snow instead of fog, and ambient music throughout. It seemed like a very generic sort of game after the opening cinematic and wandering around the opening area, but then it started to reveal itself as something more. The controls are straightforward, um, but they had some interesting things about them. You aim and shoot like in Resident Evil, but there's also a button to hum, which makes the detective slow her run to a walk, and hum a tune, which changes with each area and sometimes changes within each area depending on exactly where you stand. There's also a dedicated smoke button, which plays a unique, albeit short, cutscene where the detective smokes a cigarette and says a little something about the area or what just happened in the game. It almost feels like a journal mechanic that would be found in games like uh, Red Dead Redemption or Life is Strange, where the character recaps the last chapter in their own words, only you get to control when it happens and how often. Both of these things together kind of took me off guard and drew me into the game in a way that I didn't expect. There are no save rooms or safe rooms like in a lot of survival horror games, so these two things were like getting a break from the spooky, scary stuff whenever it happened, while also getting to hear the thoughts of the character. This did get freaky when the detective started saying things about me during these moments. The game must read your memory card and system data or something because the further I got into the game, whenever she'd smoke she'd say stuff to me about how late I was up or about the weather. Possibly it was reading the month. Um, I don't know if the GameCube has like location data and stuff like that. In the light of day, these things aren't very scary, I suppose, but after getting killed by zombies and playing till like 4am, it was definitely giving me goosebumps. It was extra creepy when the detective would do these things without being prompted. The further I got into the game, the more she would indulge in humming or smoking without me pressing the buttons. At first I thought maybe my hand slipped, but no, it's almost like she has a mind of her own. And these self-indulgent moments were often the scariest when it comes to the game directly talking to me. I played through the entire thing in one sitting, it was maybe 5-6 to six hours. There were some obvious levels included in a lot of survival horror games, like a spooky motel, a dark forest with a weird moon spirit, and an empty town center where there's a boss battle. About halfway through, the detective finds herself at her childhood home, and that's where stuff really started to get strange. I don't know how to explain it other than her house had the same layout as mine. Maybe it's just a coincidence because the game takes place in an unnamed Midwest town and maybe those houses are just sort of copy pasted anyways. But it was spooky. Her living room looked like my living room. Her bedroom was nearly identical to mine. The kitchen was an exact replica. Even the spooky stairway into the basement was in the same place. In the back of the house, in her parents' room, her mom is a zombie. There's no music, just this looped mp3 of the zombie groans. Whenever you press the button to aim, the detective hesitates and tells you not to pull the trigger. 
It was only after the mob had attacked and killed me once already that I could actually return to the room and then shoot the zombie. Immediately after, the detective took control and started humming this really broken, solemn tune. It felt recognizable, but I haven't been able to place where I heard it from. I did my best to record it here. It's been stuck in my head ever since hearing it, and I've been trying desperately to figure out where it came from. After the run-in with the mom zombie, the detective continues humming that tune, allowing me to walk slowly through the house. I returned to her bedroom and was able to interact with her childhood bedroom, which I don't think I could do before. That makes the detective climb in and go to sleep. The screen fades to black and there's a few esoteric and like weird images that flash on the screen. The strange thing is when I went through the game again, this entire section didn't happen, like at all. I don't know if it was just the order of events was different or if it was how I killed the mom or how I explored the house afterwards, I'm not sure. But these images that flashed on the screen were these brutal close-ups of the mom zombie. Like, I think they were real photos, not just renders. They were startling, and even if I can't get them to pop up again, I feel like they're still fresh in my mind. Afterwards, the detective wakes up in her childhood bedroom, and something is different. She's a child now. Her character model is smaller, she doesn't have her gun, and her entire control scheme is different. Most of the buttons are replaced with the sort of hum mechanic, which has her doing the same haunting hum from before, but with a different voice actress. As a child, she can still wander around the rest of the town, and it's still overrun with zombies. Now there's just no way to defend herself. I felt kind of stuck and frustrated with this as the zombies kept killing me, and I didn't like hearing the MP3 child scream over and over again. So eventually, I just turned the GameCube off and on again, and when the game loaded up, the detective woke up in her childhood bed as an adult. Like, none of that stuff happened. I was able to continue the game, but was unable to beat the final boss. I think there was something I had to do as a child to be able to, like, actually beat the game, but I don't know. The game was very confusing at that point, and like I said, when I tried to replay it, the child bedroom dream sequence thing didn't even happen. I think if the game has a guide or just like any information online, I could have made sense of it, but I haven't been able to find anything but this weird game manual, like the booklet that was inside the game case when it was uh, originally released. Soul Cemetery is a weird take on survival horror that really did get under my skin. I just wish I could have finished it or at least figured out what some of the weird stuff in it was doing or trying to do. If you played this game when you were younger, did you have any guides that you followed? If not, would you be able to post in the comments about any information that you have on it? Any help is appreciated. I think if we're able to crack open the point in the mysteries of this game, then maybe we'll have a true survival horror classic. Again, any help is appreciated in the comments below. Thank you. And you don't seem to...